This episode is brought to you by Hills Pet Nutrition. Every shelter pet deserves a second chance, and you're making it possible for thousands of them every day. Because when you feed your pet Hills, you help feed a shelter pet, which helps make them healthy, happy, and more adoptable, changing their life forever. So they can change yours. Over 14 million shelter pets fed and adopted. Science did that. Visit hillspet.com slash podcast to learn more. We're going to start this little uh, wizard hang here with a little game. Just to just to warm up the the funny box and all that. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna try and form a sentence, but we're gonna go one word at a time. So you're gonna say a word, I'm gonna say a word, and we're gonna go back and forth until we have a complete sentence. Oh, okay. We're not just gonna say guilty verdict or innocent verdict. All right. I'll let you start. Uh, pants. That's so weird. I was on a call yesterday, and the guy said pants. <laughs> <laughs> They're, they're a funny object on their own. Pants are like blue hamsters. <laughs> <laughs> Pants are like blue hamsters, huh? What, what hamsters have you seen these days? Well, you know, I uh, own Kansas spray paint, and there's a real hamster problem in my neighborhood. So, yeah. You know what? That's good. It's at least you're not killing gnomes. The like, I'm I'm glad that you've <laughs> changed your ways. <laughs> you just you have to highlight the hamsters so that you can you can make them out from the ground. It's not bad. You got to know which ones you've tagged already and which ones are still running them up. Exactly. If you spray paint enough of them, yeah. eventually one might be born already blue. Who knows? Well, the ones you spray paint blue are the ones that get to get away. The ones you spray paint red, they get hit by hammers. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You have to control the <laughs> the hamster population. All right, you want to introduce yourself real quick to the podcast here. <laughs> I'm I'm Liam Smith. Uh, my uh, artist name is Werewolf Bar Mitzvah, um, and uh, gradually consolidating that into uh, Wicker Wolf Art House. Um, I create erotic comics mostly, and now I'm starting to create. Uh, like real normal person comics, uh, yeah, wholesome, wholesome family yeah. uh, products as well. Yeah, they're just they're just full of bloodshed and violence and cussing. Um, yeah. but they're they're not any of that dirty, sexy comics. <laughs> I haven't gotten around to reading Fuel yet, but I definitely want to get into that. It sounds like everybody else who's read it has enjoyed it. Oh, okay. I want to just jump on the hand. I just want to jump on the hype train there at some point. Oh, maybe I was throwing out references earlier. <laughs> and you were like, uh, yeah, okay, anyway. <laughs> of course, yes. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah, <laughs> go, go read Fuel and then we can uh, make fun of it for being way too fucking dark. <laughs> and we can add, yes. add fundraiser props into it. Um, <laughs> fundraisers and oil. Right, like, the yeah, prompts, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, speaking speaking of prompts, we do have uh, each of us have prepared a story to be read here on the show. Yeah, so this was written just for fun. Um, the actually the first part of fuel is where I use my prompts, it's where I use tornadoes and fire. Oh shit! And this, I don't think I used any prompts. I just wrote this because I needed to write something that wasn't just horribly dark. Uh, That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> so this doesn't have the prompts in it. I don't think it has the prompts in it now. I call last. <laughs> so we'll, we'll okay. <laughs> you could you could start us off here with your tail. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm fucking ready. Okay, Let's do it. you're fucking. Oh, good. All right. We're going into this with uh, a full-fledged fucking. Um, welcome, to, <laughs> welcome to Yonkers is the title of this piece. And I'm going to try... <laughs> I might just drop this voice uh, two or three sentences in, but I'm going to try my, my best film noir voice for this. That bee is dead, he said. He was phoning hard. Fuchsia hard. He pissed Fuchsia and phoned and ate a crumpet. It was all on the level. <laughs> the person on the other end of the line immediately killed himself. If this man, oh my, <laughs> oh my. if this man, whoever this he was, is your, this is a wholesome tale. This is, a, whole, this is your, the fun one. Yeah, this is wholesome for you. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, you don't even want to go to fucking werewolfbarmitzvah.com. I went there once. I fucking I, w- I wasn't the same. That might be a new record for for a family friendly fun story. Suicide in two lines. <laughs> <laughs> if this man, whoever he was, perhaps a man of some sort, or maybe a guy, maybe even some sort of dude, had killed Fat B, then there was only Fat B's cousin left. Alternating drive shaft bicycle repair salesman the third, who everyone called damp. <laughs> they called him damp. A person named damp could not lead a criminal organization. He just couldn't. The bloke of some sort or another hung up the phone and his fuchsia rage dissipated. The person on the other end of the line, having been slain by his own hand, had first scrawled on his palm the horrible message in hopes that someone stronger than them would read the scribble-scratched palm and not immediately commit suicide by murdering themselves. But that was unlikely. Highly unlikely. Nay, extremely unlike being not improbably likely. (laughs) If we're talking about likelihood, what was likely was that with Fat B's death, The gent on the other end of the phone had, in fact, doomed Fat B's entire criminal organization to a rampant chain of suicides that wouldn't stop until Damp read the last scrawled palm and didn't commit suicide because Damp actually had some pretty strong self-confidence, which couldn't be shaken by such a thing and would in all likelihood open a bicycle repair shop that sold alternating drive shafts or something. He was experienced with knowing about hearing it could be done from someone who existed at a place that also occurred at a time. The single Y chromosome holder that made the call stepped out of the phone booth and put back on his hat, which was a lamp, and turned it on so he could have some visibility. What the fuck? <laughs> the other people with hat lamps were in the area were disgusted with this flagrant use of his lamp, which was only to be used on days without fog, and today was especially foggy. But as he stepped over Fat B's body, laying truncheoned and flanged, out into the fog of Bean Fart Grove, The lamp-headed dingleberry holder knew that he had to call attention to himself, or else he would never get away with the crime. Everyone in Beedfart Grove knew that only those who committed non-crimes called attention to themselves, and that everyone else not calling attention to themselves was clearly a fucking criminal and should be punished. But that was because they were also into consensual, non-consensual role-playing at all times, which was the city's charter. So they were expected to presume to believe that all participants of the city's environment were criminals waiting to punish them, Daddy! Punish them hard! Oh my, this story is fucking wild. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be a cold day in Hank's pants before the lad took the fall for Fat B's death. Even though he had definitely murder-killed Fat B to permadeath with a death-causing truncheon and a use-this-to-murder flange. His name... This pal, this boyo, this person of male origin? No. No, that's his name. Is no. I know it's confusing that his name is no, but it really is his, his name. name. Is no. No, really. It's no. It's it's no. I'm serious. No, I mean you could ask him No, like yeah. You can ask him to change the name. It's a family name, and he's proud of it. You'd probably say no. So we're gonna have to abide by that. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> He's totally okay with us changing the name for the sake of clarity of the story? Okay, his name was Frank. (laughs) Back at home, Frank showered off the clumps of molasses that had formed on his skin because of the death slaughtering he had done against the molasses-blooded heavyweight crime boss in Insectite 4. But the molasses had clogged the drain. He was using a drain snake to unclog it and did so while being very naked and trying not to be bitten by an extremely myopic serpent Obsessed with getting into small, narrow places. Frank protected his butthole. After he showered off, he took out his passport and looked at it dramatically to indicate to you, the reader, that he was thinking about escaping. Much like the writer, he had no idea where he was going. Frank had some idea of where he was going, and wherever it was, he definitely knew exactly where he was going. Yonkers. Some time ago, Yonkers, New York, had been systematically cordoned off by a pissed-off wizard who had drunk too much tab and sucked Yonkers out of the physical realm by making slurping noises into a cauldron until a temporal portal formed. 
the? When Yonkers came, to- all of Yonkers is gone. <laughs> yep, that's right. It's all gone. I mean, would anyone notice? <laughs> you're right. When you're right, you're right. right. When Yonkers came to, it was X Rexley next to Bean Fart Grove. Except that X Rexley means multiple states away from. It was located on Earth 2.0, 900 walking moments from Earth in the Centaur Galactic Hub of multiple unplaceable references. Yonker was pissed, and it stayed pissed. Yonkers was the most pissed off place on Earth 2.0, and they made it known with a sign that said Yonkers, population, future. As he took the highway exit into Yonkers, Frank started seeing blurred lines and knew that he needed to re-up on ham bones before it was too late and he went into withdrawal, at which point Robin, the Robin Thickson, where he acts like a pedophile around Miley Cyrus, would start playing at full blast in his ears at all times. Even though she was technically of age, but only just, and, and really, Robin is like a grown-ass man, and they were clearly exploiting this girl like a year before. She was like a real life fucking busy prisoner. So suddenly she's shaking her total lack of butt fat in front of some old gross has been and trying to eject her tongue from her mouth. Like that dude legitimately is fucked up. And everyone who saw it knew exactly what was going on. How shocking that it happened to like three other television presenters or, te- or female uh, television entertainers at the same time, all who were moving from their kids' pop days into the professional careers. And above, oh, by the way, like two years later, suddenly producers started getting nailed to the wall by the Me Too movement. No correlation there. No, no cor- correlation whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, what a huge coincidence all of that now, was. Just, just all happened. <laughs> Happens to occur, Frank had to stop by the gas station outside of Yonkers because he knew that once he crossed those city limits, it was pure fuchsia chaos for 69 miles, nose head to gooch anus. Oh my goodness. <laughs> hey there, brother, the local drug dealer dressed like Randy Savage said as Frank got out of his car. Frank greeted the man with a long, passionate French kiss in which he attempted to touch the man's tonsils with his tongue. Oh my goodness. <laughs> What a way to greet somebody. Right outside of Yonkers, it's like ridiculously intimate. <laughs> the classic Yonkers greeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their teeth ground against one another as they embraced passionately. He felt one of the drug de- dealer's sausage fingers squimping. Yeah, squimping? Squimping? Yeah. Up into his butthole. See, without context, he knew exactly what it means. It's not a real word. <laughs> it is now. But it wasn't a moment ago. Squimping. <laughs> Into his butthole. <laughs> like, yeah, that's that. that exactly <laughs> you know what that. it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. New, new word invented on your podcast in real time. New vocab words. I love this. It's like Dr. <laughs> Seuss, like just inventing words wherever they're needed. Now we can put that into the dictionary. That's how this legally works. Yep. Once Frank had licked the stench of pie in relation to one's butthole. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, insertion, insertion, just for buttholes, or I don't know. We're gonna have to explore that with later uses of squimping. Yeah, yeah. Once Frank had licked the stench of pie off the drug dealer's throat and ads, they separated, and Frank got down to business. I need your biggest ham bones. Hey there, brother. The drug dealer said and opened up his coat to reveal his penis. Then he showed Frank the truck of his car, where he had several ham bones stashed for perusing customers who read books with eyes for, for detail, given that they were perusing and not skimming. I'll take the one with the hook on the end. Oh, sorry, hang on. Let me do this again. I'll take the one with the hook on the end, Frank said, his That's voice a so low funny. falsetto. <laughs> <laughs> Hey there, brother, the drug dealer said, and took out a long, uh, the foot-long ham bone, stuffing it into Frank's rectum with extreme prejudice against South Asians, something Frank did not support as a pan-Africanist. <laughs> I, I mean, we can go into details behind Frank's support for pan-Africanism and how it correlates to his cross-cultural support for South Asian movements of independence, but generally you should know that he did not conflate the two and did not originally come from the African state of Pan, which doesn't exist on Earth, but it does on Earth 2.0. Of course, as we all know, the just yeah, the new planet. 
just an author's note. I mean, most people know it, you know, but you have to specify. Yeah, yeah we all we all know this. We all know this. All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Those of us who stay up with current events, at least. The hand bone fit ripely and gave Frank a sense of pathological preconditioning towards purchasing air conditioning units that were on sale because of malfunctioning temperature control knobs. It felt good to me normal again. Frank paid the drug dealer promptly by painting his toenails beige, to which the drug dealer said, Hey there, brother! And Frank got back on the road. Frank pedaled his tricycle into Yonkers. The car sparked across three handicap spaces. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> As was appropriate, underneath the sign that said, we park like fucking badasses here. If you're handicapped and you don't like it, get fucked. It's Yonkers, bitch. <laughs> they do say that in Yonkers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's what their signs say. Um, um, the classic slogan. The, it's the town slogan, I, I think. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, signs all over the place. Uh, you can even get, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, license frames, right, that have that on it. Mm-hmm. Hey, fuck you, yelled a native as Frank headed into the motel. The typical Yonkers greeting. Eat my shit, you goddamn cocksucker, Frank yelled back in a tone that could only be described as apoplectic or future. I'll fucking murder your family, you cockroach scum sucking piss boy, the stranger replied, and Frank knew everything was okay. Nobody suspected a thing. <laughs> All is normal in Yonkers. Yes, this is all. This is all at the level. This is all everything. Normal Yonkers behavior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Scum sucking this boy is a, a typical. You know, how you doing, buddy? For for Yonkers. Yeah. yeah. How do you do? Yeah. As he checked into his motel, he looked into his wallet and pulled out a crumpled piece of paper on which a laser printed printer had printed the word bowels in varying text that described the face of his boyfriend, Frank. Yeah, his, his boyfriend's name is Frank, and we really can't change that because the man is proud of his name. It's a family name, so we have to respect it. Mm-hmm. Wait, what? He's okay with us changing it? Okay. His boyfriend's name is Martha. Oh, shit. Frank looked at Martha's picture <laughs> and cried tears. <laughs> Pure tears. <laughs> Almost done, Chris. Okay, okay. I'm enraptured. Keep going. I uh, uh, wrote this for myself, you can tell. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll get back to your head face, Martha. Once this all blows over, I'll... Why are you talking to a piece of paper? The maid asked Frank. She had come into the room, even though it wasn't cleaning time, and he had put a sign on the door that read, Do not be making foot gestures of going inside this area place currently. Sign on the door. Wait, Frank said. I know thee. It was Fat B's primary assassin. And V knows the lyrics to a famous pop song, Kill Murdering, the maid replied, unsheathing her murdering flange. No! Oh, shit! Oh, Frank yelled, actually screaming his own name. To be continued. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a fucking roller coaster that whole thing was. <laughs> Jesus, Louisa. So that's what film noir question mark that's, script? That's the most absurd shit I've <laughs> ever heard. And that's surprisingly the most wholesome thing I've ever heard. I've ever heard of you as well, right? Yeah, yeah. you were right there. Like there was a lot of fuck yous, a lot of eat shit, but that's just standard Yonkers fare. Like that's what they teach kids yeah. in, in Yonkers. Everybody knows that's what you get when you go into Yonkers, and it's okay. It's, it's a culture <laughs> thing. It's just a culture. It's just a. It's just a pure fuchsia void. <laughs> yeah, he pissed fuchsia, man. He opened his coat and he showed him his dick, and then he opened his trunk. <laughs> The show. I'm really glad she liked that. <laughs> no, that whole thing was fucking brilliant. Hey there, brother. You truly are. You truly are a published writer. <laughs> <laughs> you submit this shit to <laughs> immediately. Fucking... Yeah. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. Prodigious. Is fucking... there console again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Redefining. <laughs> yeah. No. This is. <laughs> 
the new cultural phenomenon. <laughs> no, aka Frank. <laughs> And his boyfriend, Frank, a.k.a. Martha. Yeah, I mean, uh, we really didn't think through the, uh, you know, given that guy is that nickname, but I uh, forgot that the, the boyfriend was going to be okay with it. So, you know. Yeah, no, yeah. It's good that the boyfriend was cool with that. Yeah, Frank's a good guy. And by Frank, I mean Martha. Right. Okay, well, there's my story. Yeah, no, that's a story. All right, that's for sure. I can't wait to hear how it how it ends. <laughs> that's a story. This is probably the best description. You left us on such a good cliffhanger. I just can't wait for Welcome to Yonkers Part Two. <laughs> and then he died, Finn. <laughs> Dude, don't tempt me. Don't fucking tempt me. <laughs> I'll submit a whole story like it's actually a story. You guys will open up. You would go, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a picture of Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> and then the Tin Man killed him and screamed, I fucking love oil. I fucking love oil. There it is. <laughs> and speaking of oil, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm gonna read my oil and tornado story, but I'm not going to read all of it because it'll be, it would be treading similar ground. It'll make sense once I get into it. Okay, sick. Sure. The Fable and Folly Network supports creators of exceptional audio stories, including the one you're listening to right now. If you love our shows, we want to hear from you. Complete our listener survey at fableandfolly.com slash survey. This will help us learn more about you, what you like, what you'd like to hear more of, and how we can maintain an inclusive, safe atmosphere. As a thank you for your participation, we have extras and behind-the-scenes content from your favorite shows. Fans make the network what it is. Thanks for listening, and we can't wait to hear from you. Find our listener survey at fableandfolly.com slash survey today. <clears throat> All right. I'm fucking ready. So previously on Wizard Hang, I had read a story to Ace called Home Alone 11, These Edibles Ain't Shit. Oh, hell yeah. And this was, just, as, as, as you may have heard from the classic Wizard Hang 24, I think, 25, one of those. It was the Princesses and Disasters episode. Um, <clears throat> one of the big plot points was that a good third of the story was skipped as a joke. And so for the Oils and Tornadoes uh, prompts in our writing club, I decided to return to this story and kind of fill it out. So basically what I did was I just took the same story, added an act two, and then resubmitted it as a as its own original work. Oh, okay, sweet. So, yeah. It, wait, is this the story that we read for the writing group last month? This was uh, Princesses and Disasters. Okay. Now it's Oil and Tornadoes, and the new title is Home Alone 11 Gaiden Beyond the Yellow Brick Road, a.k.a. The Wizard Scroll of Oz. <laughs> so I changed things up a little bit. But Acts 1 and 3 are pretty much the same, so we're just going to get started. We're going to skip right ahead to... The new stuff, we'll call it. Act 2. The assignment was a simple one. So simple that even a boy could do it. Unfortunately, the boy was not a boy at all. He was 43 and crossfaded out of his fucking mind off the edibles in that one gnome's house. He ate the gnome's house in this one, by the way. I guess, like... <laughs> he ate... <laughs> <laughs> like, the gnome had, like, a mushroom house and he ate it during Act 1. As an aside. Oh, okay. So it was by mere happenstance that he and Frodo proceeded in the right direction at all. They follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road, and we're off to see the wizard Dr. Oz, whether the boy was cognizant of the plan or not. The boy stumbled along behind his pet, the dog Frodo, who presently led the charge. They stuck to the road and walked in a straight line through a bright green field. A picturesque landscape that someday might be memorialized as a magic rectangle XP stock wallpaper. Grassy green hillocks and clear cyan blue skies for miles in all directions. Let's just say that it was a bad day to be a cloud. Anyway, the boy and his dog followed the road as the surrounding green field crossfaded into some farmland. 
cows, horses, pigs, chickens, and ponies and shit could now be seen grazing in the background as a large cornfield came into view. Horses and ponies are two distinct creatures, by the way. They are not the same thing, as Ace will tell you. There's a very distinct difference. Ponies are completely different beings. It's like a it's a completely different genus and species. It's like a mule. It's, yeah. But like even more different. <laughs> but even more okay, yeah, yeah. And lo, it was here where one of the unassuming scarecrows stationed about the corn leapt out at them with wild flailing arms raised to his zenith. <laughs> okay. Well, hi there, stranger. I'm a fucking talking scarecrow. <laughs> My name's Robert. What's yours? No reply from the boy. Bark, bark! Why, hello there, Frodo. It's a pleasure to meet you. What brings y'all around these parts? Bark, 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 bark! <laughs> so, this is the boy of legend, I see. <laughs> and you're headed to Dr. Oz's sanctum right now. Golly, mind if I tag along, Frodo? I really do miss being a real boy like your friend there. I was hoping Dr. Oz could do some science magic to undo the scarecrow curse he cast on me about three months back. The boy paid no mind to Robert, and instead had jumped a fence to go running around in the cow plops out in yonder field. (laughs) After a good amount of searching about, he found what he sought. Magic mushrooms which grew from the fecal matter strewn about in the grass. Oh, that's a good one. The boy ate a handful of... (laughs) Yeah. He knew knew they're good shit. The boy ate a handful of these shrooms with a flourish, then looked at the camera and smiled his iconic smile, except now one of his eyes appeared a full inch lower on his face than normal. (laughs) I'll take that as a yes. Yippee! We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful Dr. Oz. The boy, the scarecrow, and Frodo skipped merrily along the yellow brick road, directly into the forest. That lush spattering of pines, oaks, and apple trees, which so many little woodland critters called home. The birds were chirping, the deer were prancing, and the rabbits, well, they were doing what rabbits did best. Fuck it. As the... (laughs) Yeah, fuck it. You guessed it. Yay! See my story? (laughs) Yeah. As the camera panned over to a six-foot-tall metal man with rust locking his limbs in place, looming there, completely motionless right alongside the yellow brick road. And hence, the party stopped to investigate. Well, Robert and Frodo stopped to investigate, while the boy simply stood and stared at a tree throughout this next exchange. Howdy ho, hey there, friend. I'm Robert, and these are my friends Frodo and the Boy of Legend. You seem to be stuck, sir. Is there anything we can do to help? Evidently, the metal man was rusted so bad that even his lips were stuck in place. Only his cold, lifeless, unblinking eyes remained functional, and presently made obvious sweeping gestures toward the oil can sitting unceremoniously in the grass at his side. Bark, bark! Gosh, I think you're right, Frodo. Mayhaps some oil could lube up this feller's hinges right quick. And lo... The scarecrow stooped down to retrieve the oil can in question and presently applied some to the mysterious metal man's lips. And you know what that man said? Take a wild guess what he said. (laughs) Oh, I can only imagine it was something related to oil. I fucking love oil. Oh. You're quite welcome, sir. Now, what's your story, stranger? I fucking love oil. (laughs) Ah, so your name is Tin Man, and you got caught out in the rain and rusted over? You poor thing. I fucking love oil. (laughs) Of course, friend. Though there's no need to get political about it. I can oil up the rest of your hinges for you right quick. (laughs) Bark, bark. Holy shit, Frodo. That was the single most expressly racist, homophobic, and otherwise problematic sentence ever to be uttered in the land of Oz. If anybody else understood what you just said, you'd get canceled on Twitter.scroll for sure. I fucking love oil. Why, yes, Tin Man. I'm glad you asked. Frodo, the boy, and I are headed to Dr. Oz's place to get our wishes granted. You can tag along if you'd like. I fucking love oil, he said as he spontaneously transformed into a car. (laughs) Oh, that's wonderful. Tin Man's classic ability. (laughs) 
<laughs> Everyone knows he's able to do right. that. Yeah. Just her- Herbie love bug himself into a car for no reason. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, I remember that from The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, it was a big part of it. Yeah, of course. Uh, driving the yellow brick road with a Tin Man. Tin Man's in public domain now. I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. It's like Winnie the Pooh, like when they fucking... When they made that horror film about the guy who's Winnie the Pooh now and he just wanted to kill people or whatever. Oh my god, that's what that was about. I heard a reference to that recently. I had no idea what that was. <laughs> so Winnie the Pooh entered public domain and then they turned it into a horror film. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. You're doing this, and I'm doing the same thing for Tin Man. <laughs> driving, 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 driving the yellow brick road. Yeah, <laughs> now in car form, Tin Man closely resembled an old Ford Model T, except his face was the steering wheel. <laughs> Robert and Frodo piled inside promptly, and the party was ready to embark, though they had almost forgotten about our beloved main protagonist, the boy, who evidently had wandered off into the woods unsupervised. After several hours of searching, the rest of the group found him floating face down in a nearby pond. (laughs) The party proceeded along the yellow brick road as the boy, no worse for wear, honked Tin Man's face like a car horn. I fucking love oil. <laughs> okay, so facing face down really didn't do him any. He just kind of like, yeah, he just kind of like pressed on his face. Like, imagine, werewolf, that like someone like touches your face and then you just say, I fucking love oil is what happened. Like, there's no horn. <laughs> there's, no horn. there's no horn here. Is it, is it even, is it louder than usual or the exact same volume? No, it's just, <laughs> it's just him saying it. <laughs> That's the horn. Okay. Presently, they came to a fork in the road, though the yellow bricks continued both ways. To their left, a nice, pleasant path full of sentient stuffed bears and butterflies and rainbows and shit. (laughs) The setting sun on the horizon coloring the sky, all sorts of yellows and pinks and purples on a nice gradient. Lightning crashed in the background for added effect as we pan over to the path on the right to where a dark, smoky miasma filled the air, shrouding the already dark, evil-looking woods in another layer of darkness. <laughs> All right, gang, looks like we got ourselves a pretty obvious choice here. A nice cruise along the countryside, or certain death in those dark woods. All in favor of the left path? A lone tumbleweed rolled across the yellow brick road, <laughs> and crickets could be heard in the background as well. Opposed? I fucking love oil. <laughs> bark, 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 bark. And then the boy says a picture of his face. <laughs> is it is it the the smirk? Yeah, it's the, you know what picture yeah. it is. But like, <laughs> I wrote in the in the script, I wrote the boy colon quotation mark the picture and then end quotation marks. <laughs> <laughs> right, because we all know what picture that is. Yeah, it's an it's a fucking emoji in our Discord server. Right. What? Why not the pleasant path? Don't those dark woods give you fellas the creeps? I fucking love oil. Tin Man, just because the dark woods are dark like oil doesn't mean there's oil in the dark woods. All that's probably in there is some lions and tigers and bears and and, and Orc J. Simpson and fucking, and fucking dragons and fucking <laughs> gnomes and dwarves and fucking... A baseball player and fucking other shit that'll eat us. I say we go left. Bark, 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 bark. What do you mean, who made me the boss? I'm the only one who can fucking talk. Of course I'm going to lead. <laughs> I fucking love oil. Before the argument could continue, Tin Man drove himself directly into the dark, oil-colored woods, much to the abhorrence of the Scarecrow, who now sat in silent, begrudging acceptance. I mean, to be fair, I am, as a jaded policy analyst, looking at that choice and going, well, actually, the obvious choice is just to go into the dark woods, because the other Obviously. the other choice can't exist, right? It's, it's a too good to be true, and you just look at it and you go, no, there's a horrible catch to that, like... Yeah, no, those those sentient stuffed bears are fucking evil. They will eat you. Yeah. It's like a Five Nights at Freddy's scenario. Like, if you are not one of them, they will fucking stuff you into a suit and fucking kill you. Yeah, what, in that what order. they're hiding under that fur are two-foot spiked penises. For sure. 
<laughs> oh god. <laughs> like just uh, that sounds right like now. something straight out of werewolffarmitzvah.com, baby. What? What are you talking about? I don't put spikes <laughs> on my creature's penises. <laughs> Not on the penis, no. but elsewhere. <laughs> The party traversed blindly through the dark and spooky woods. It was so dark in them thar woods that it would make your mama say, Gee, it's kind of dark. Did you bring a light? And then your daddy would turn to look at the camera and say, No. Fortunately for you, dear listener, Tin Man is not your father. So presently, he activated his trusty oil lamp headlights to shed some light on their situation. But alas, the darkness was still positively overwhelming. They had gone from like no sight at all to like three feet of viz at most, but that was about it. Sheesh, it smells like a Snoopasaurus Rex concert in here. I say it's so dank in here, it's almost as if someone or something is continuously hotboxing this here forest. That would be me. The dragon's booming voice bellowed upon the party from behind. They turned to see a seven-foot-tall dragon leering down at them as he spread his wings wide and blew some of the smoke away with one mighty flap. The party could now see their assailant, a large orange dragon with bloodshot, drooping red eyes, blasting streams of smoke from his nostrils with each and every exhale. Dude must have been blasted 24-7, 369. <laughs> Now, who dares disturb me, the mighty Bongzilla, in my neck of the woods? We were just, uh, following the yellow brick road to old Dr. Oz's place is all. Do you play me for a fool, scarecrow bitch? You're miles away from the yellow brick road. Now tell me why you're really here, before I tear your body of burlap and straw apart limb from limb. I fucking love oil. Ah, the brains of the operation, I see. Now looky here, you newfangled talking car. You ain't laying a goddanged windshield wiper on my oil vape cartridges. Now piss off before I slash three of your tires and break your fucking windshield. <laughs> I I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience my friend has caused you, Mr. Bongzilla, sir. We'll be on our way if you'd kindly escort us back to the road. Right, Tin Man? I fucking love oil. How eloquently put, Tin Man, my friend. All is forgiven. How's about I join you guys on your quest to see Dr. Oz as well? I would really like to be able to exhale carbon dioxide instead of weed smoke for once. <laughs> the party rejoiced as the mighty dragon Bongzilla lifted Tin Man and all of his passengers into the air high above the dark woods. Revealing a starry night sky, the likes of which made the boy's bloodshot, glassy eyes twinkle and sparkle. His pupils dilating to such a degree that his eyes now appeared completely black. Sick. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful Dr. Oz. I fucking love oil. Of course. Bark, 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 bark! <laughs> and then the boy. <laughs> There's a picture of the boy, except I colored I colored his eyes black in MS Paint and put a bunch of stars in there. <laughs> Beautiful. And that's where Act 2 of this story ends. Act 3 continues where... Um, I mean, I guess I could just do that now. All right, I'm ready. Fuck it. My body is ready. This will be retreading some things pre on a previ from a previous episode, but... Okay. The boy, Robert, Tin Man, now in man form, Bongzilla, and Frodo stepped into Dr. Oz's lair. The vibe was for sure dark and mysterious. Deep emerald green walls and fog machines abound. The Scarecrow, as one of two members of the team able to speak coherently, spoke. Well, this must be the place. Now where's that good doctor we've heard so much about? Perhaps he's on lunch break, or a poopy time break. Or both. <laughs> what do you think, Tin Man? I fucking love oil. <laughs> An explosion of smoke and light gave quite the fright to our beloved protagonists. As a colossal hologram of Dr. Oz was projected onto the smoke in the air, complete with pointy wizard hat and scrubs. Really hideous. Well, 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 if it isn't the boy and his motley crew of friends. I've been expecting you. My name is Octavius, but you may call me Dr. Oz. How may I be of assistance to you today? Uh, hello. My name's Robert. 
You turned me into a fucking scarecrow about three months back, and I was wondering if you could turn me back into a real boy. Very well. Holy fucking shit, he killed Robert. That's right. I am not a benevolent wish granter at all. I am an MD, which of course is short for massive dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> the boy did the scream pose at this revelation. What are you going to do to us? Well, Bongzilla, since you asked, I shall expound. I plan to swap brains with the boy. That way, I shall have all my decades of knowledge contained in the young, nubile body of a boy. Indeed, with my brand new brain omatic device, I can become immortal! <laughs> no significant loss there. Dude, he's like 43 years old, said Frodo the dog. <laughs> no matter. <laughs> I shall not be dissuaded any longer. Give me the boy and I shall grant you each one wish. I fucking love oil. Ah, yes, Mr. Tin Man. Oil beyond your wildest dreams could be yours if you give me the boy. Hold on. I'm fucking dying over here. <laughs> there was a serious moment of anticipation. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. I fucking love oil. Oh, of course. Okay. <laughs> Tin Man. You can't possibly be considering giving up the boy like that. He killed Robert. Bongzilla, my dear, you must be hungry after such a long journey. You give me the boy, I'll serve you up the finest munchies money can buy on a silver platter. Real shit? I shit you not. I only want the boy. The rest of you are free to go. But what about Robert? Oh, he's dead. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mean, like, it's cool, really. I only met the guy today. Honestly, no hard feelings. Excellent! <laughs> Oil and snacks appeared in the sanctum before Tin Man and Bongzilla, respectively. As Tin Man produced a silly straw from within his chest plate and happily began drinking the oil. Wait, shit, I wanted something else. Sorry, champ, one wish per party member, them's the rules. Aw, oh, rats. <laughs> Uh, thanks for the snacks. You're most welcome, Bongzilla. I fucking love oil. <laughs> oh, yes, Tin Man. Do enjoy that oil. Bark, 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 bark. Don't think I've forgotten about you, little Frodo. How would you like your testicles back? <laughs> the dog nodded vigorously, as if to say, yes, please, holy fuck. The good doctor snapped his fingies like Thanos, and the dog's <laughs> testicles grew back in a flash. And lo, the trio was off. Tin Man, Bongzilla, and Frodo happily absconded from the sanctum with each of their respective wishes fulfilled. Goodbye, gents. Thanks for selling out your friend like that. Made things really easy for me. I had this whole thing with flying monkeys planned, but I guess we're just glossing over this whole damn movie at this point. I fucking love oil. What he said. The door of the sanctum slammed shut behind the trio as Dr. Oz powered down his hologram device and wrung his hands together evilly. You know the kind. <laughs> his chuckles turned to giggles, his giggles into chortles, his chortles into a full-on guffaw as the wizard doctor emerged from behind his curtain. At long last, I am alone with the boy! Come now, young child. Why don't you sit down in this nice chair and relax as I strap you into place? The boy obeyed without much prodding, and Dr. Oz set to work. He switched on his brain omatic and placed the device over the boy's skull, which was thusly carved open like a pumpkin on Hallow's Eve. <laughs> But alas, when Dr. Oz removed the top of the boy's skull and peered inside, he was aghast at what he found. For inside the boy's skull was a baked potato in lieu of a brain. What the fuck? How did that get in there? Finn. <laughs> Dr. Oz will return in Home Alone 12. <laughs> Whatever the fuck I named that one. It's already written. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. 
Absolutely love it as always. What man. the fuck was That's it called? It was, it was something. Uh, Steve Buscemi's navel. <laughs> Home Alone 12, Steve Buscemi's navel. You heard it here first. (laughs) Yeah, you've had us read iterations of that in the past. I I love that... um, the one I, I missed it the last time that I had read this. Uh, the line from Toto, not Toto, his dog. What was his dog's name? Frodo. Frodo. Yeah, he actually had a line. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. That was in the original too. That was in the Princesses and Disasters version of this, and it was here now. Oh yeah, no, I just glossed over it when I had previously read it. Um, I didn't realize that the line had come from Frodo. Right, like I read the line and automatically assumed it came from the dragon or Tin Man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh no, just yeah, the dragon or Robert. Yeah, (laughs) they come from Tin Man. I did. I did find it. I found is Home Alone Twelve Return to Oz. (laughs) Okay. All right. Gotcha. <laughs> the next one's just going to be about the prison, right? What's that? <laughs> Oz, the prison, the uh, series from HBO. So old, old series. Never mind. It's it's not a it's not that Oz, but <laughs> I don't want to spoil too much. But the prompts for that one were talk shows and a picture of Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> right. okay. uh, that's fantastic, dude. We'll get into that eventually, listeners, dear ladies and folks at home. As you can probably tell, we've written quite a few of these since uh, <laughs> since we last uh, joined here. It's been a couple months. We've been writing this whole time. It's just I haven't been recording Wizard Hangs because I was working on uh, Season 1 Redone this whole time. Now that that's all, like, mostly out of the way, fuck, man, I'm glad to be back. Werewolf, I'm glad to have you here. Yeah, thank you for having me on. This was a ton of fun. One of my one, I, I it must have been like one of the first stories or whatever. When I was taking notes for all of the writing, I wrote you in like in my notes. I had I had it as Wolf Job <laughs> instead, <laughs> which you might be aware of that already. Yeah, I might need to make another name change. <laughs> <laughs> Wolf Job. Wolf Job dot com. Yeah, <laughs> slightly less wholesome <laughs> than the actual Wolf Job. Uh, Asterix even less wholesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's great. <laughs> What's the Wolf Job? Oh, um, you never seen that? No, I don't think I. Oh my, you are in for a treat. Let me see if I can find the original. I'm I'm just gonna get a lot of terrible porno looking that up. Is it a Game Grumps thing? It, they brought it up, but it was it was something else before that. Okay. It's like it's just a picture of a wolf jerking off a man. Oh, gotcha. Let me copy this image. I'm gonna just send it to you. <laughs> this is yeah. This is part of the course in my. Uh... It's your new profile picture. <laughs> I could easily just drop that in as my profile picture in my weird ass <laughs> fetish community. Like this is part of the course. Oh, they would love it too. Yeah. Like there's somebody who who was commissioned to create that, and they fucking were all like, whoever commissioned that was all about it. I have like, seen like a thousand <laughs> different iterations of things like this. <laughs> like the the just. The most disturbing part of having a weird fetish is like that it's so adjacent to so much weirder shit. And you're like, yeah, this is normal. This is normal. Oh my god, this is normal. This is normal. Oh my god, like that's that's how you scroll through those boards. I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna drop it in the pets chat. <laughs> There's a yeah. How do you put like a? Let me put a spoiler attachment on that. I think there's a sensor bar in his dick, so you can definitely get away with dropping it to Discord. There is. Yeah. It'll, it, it's in there. <laughs> so anyway, that was that. Wolf Job, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I just found a t-shirt <laughs> story was great. of Wolf Job with uh, everyone wearing snowman hats or uh, uh, winter hats. And instead of a sensor bar over his penis, it's it's a present. So anyway. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Fucking wizard scroll shop dot fourth wall dot com coming soon. <laughs> yeah, I just really needed to point that out. There's also a magic card out there. 
Okay, yeah, it was really great oh, to hang out with you and get to read my story, bro. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. That, that story was fucking phenomenal. <laughs> I truly are a writer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take what I can get. You wanna... <laughs> yeah, we can take this time now. You can plug it, whatever you want to plug. Yeah, um, Meat Grinder is the comic that I'm currently working on, and I'm going to release another episode, uh, probably episode. I'm going to release another issue uh, this month or next month. Um, but yeah, if you look for Werewolf Bar Mitzvah and look for Meat Grinder in the same, you know, search, you can probably find them on Google at this point. Uh, otherwise, you can go to werewolfbarmitzvah.com. I think I have links for Meat Grinder there. Uh, it also has a bunch of weird erotica, so just be aware of that if you're going to that website. Yes. Yeah. L- listener, beware. You're in for a scare when you... <laughs> If you click that link. Yes, I am a weird old creepy pornographer. I will just fucking put that out there. You got to pay the bill somehow. Yeah, so thanks for having me on your show. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being on. Nice, wholesome stories. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. All right, so do you have any, like, do you have any goofs or spoofs or gaffes you want to end the, the, the show with here? Uh, zip, zop, zorp. And uh, that's my spell for turning people into uh, ham bones. So that you can put them in your butthole. <laughs> Are you is it like ham bone? I was meaning to ask that. Is it like ham bone, like ham boning, like slapping yourself, like, or is it like a different thing? It's a bone that you would get in a in a slab of ham. Oh, yeah. a ham bone. I see. Yeah. I see now. I see clearly, and I don't want that anywhere on me or in me for that matter. But whatever you're into, man, I'm not here to judge. Oh, once once you start doing them. Um, you know, if you go into withdrawal, you'll just start seeing the, the blurred lines on you. So. <laughs> Fucking numerous yeah. disturbing kinks, each one more disturbing than the last. <laughs> right, zip, zop, zoobity, zop, everybody. Catch you next time. <laughs> zip, zop, zoop. <laughs>